Okay, everybody, let's get started. All the world is watching the Met Gala. There is nothing more spectacular in the world in terms of fashion and jewelry and self-presentation than the first Monday in May in the Costume Institute Gala. Is that the Toussaint? Mm. I'd say you look like a million bucks, but it's more like a hundred million. Thank you. It's 150 million, actually. <laughs> Everybody who's anybody is at that gala. Romances start and end there. Um, connections are made. This is the Met Gala, after all. Gala. Met Gala. It was pretty exciting to be in the Met and recreate this. I mean, I've been to the Met Ball twice myself, so um, I didn't have to do a lot of acting to imagine what that would be like to be in the Met Ball. I mean, you never know who you're gonna see. It's like stars from all over the planet, meaning actors, uh, people in the fashion industry. The night that we shot, you know, the big Met Ball with all the celebrities, we just I was just sitting in the corner watching it all, just, Movie making is pretty amazing sometimes, and, and that was a piece of movie making I'd never experienced before. In three and a half weeks, the Met will be hosting its annual ball, considered to be one of the most exclusive. The most exclusive. The most exclusive party invitation in America. <laughs> Met Ball really has become its own moment in the calendar. The first Monday in May is the start of our exhibition at the Costume Institute. So each spring we do a major exhibition and the gala really celebrates it. It's really become the epicenter of the fashion world. You know, it's New York's version of the Oscars. The Met Ball is the most famous party in the world. It was a jewelry heist that we wanted to do and rather than stealing it from a jewelry case or a vault. We thought we'd talk our way out of the vault and steal it from someplace interesting. In the same way that the Bellagio is such a central part of Ocean's Eleven, the Met is, it is New York. So Gary went straight to Vogue, was his first meeting with Anna Wintour. Vogue was very open to doing this. I mean, I think they saw synergy. I think that Anna realized in her first conversation with me that I was not gonna make fun of this, but celebrate it, and that we were gonna devote the resources necessary to put on a Met Ball that was worthy of the ones that they stage. We started out thinking we had to build the set, and through conversations with Vogue, Anna Wintour introduced us to the president of the Met, and it just made sense for everyone. They wanted the Met to be the Met, we wanted the Met to be the Met, and it just wouldn't have been the same on stage. We were honored to be asked to have an opportunity to be part of the movie, and the entire crew, the cast, the director, everyone was so respectful of this institution, we thought it would be a good partnership. I've actually grown close to a lot of the people at the Met. The first thing is to promise them, you know, first we will do no harm, that we respect the institution above all else. We understand that we're being given access to something that's pretty extraordinary and pretty rare. This is something very, very special to me, and I consider, you know, their collection to be a pretty hallowed thing. And back to Russia, and camera, and Director Gary Ross, just he knew the museum so well, and Gary's knowledge of the museum, I think, was really helpful in everybody's awareness about the precious works of art. Because, look, I'm sitting next to John Singer Sargent's Madame X, and there's, like, you know, grips walking around with C-stands. I mean, literally one false move, and it's, you've wrecked more than the budget of the movie. You know, Gary really wanted it to be the Met Gala, not a movie version of it. We worked closely with Vogue to make sure that it was as accurate as it could be. The commitment to authenticity, I think, began with Gary Ross, the director. Um, he really wanted to bring the museum as much to the fore as possible. So a lot of the shots even started on art and then would kind of pan into the event itself and the characters. Anna Wintour suggested Hamish Bowles to help in curating the costume exhibition. Hamish was fantastic. He came in, he did the costume collection that would be there for the Met Gallup. When Gary first showed me his visuals and his concept for this room, his idea it was this kind of end of empire, almost like a crumbling Venetian palazzo with the furniture submerged. So 
we've framed the exhibition around the idea of royal dress and its enduring influence on fashion designers. And we've done it absolutely as we would curate a, a, a legitimate museum show. I arrived at this idea that if I was going to use the Temple of Dender, that I had to reconcile this large Egyptian monument with my theme, which was European royalty. So we created Versailles around the Temple of Dender, and it sort of existed harmoniously. We practically created the Versailles garden. Exactly. You know, all the greenery, all the topiaries, the gazebo covered in ivy, the stairs. Gary and Raul worked together to have this idea of coming from outside in the gardens to walking through this gate and having footmen dressed in these resplendent pastel costumes. And it was a very colorful, beautiful, grand uh, entrance into the exhibition. We cr created two rooms in this kind of imagined um, exhibition. The first is kind of like the Queens and the Hive. It explores Tudor and Elizabethan dress, and we have an amazing dress that Sarah Burton designed for Alexander McQueen, and two extraordinary haute couture dresses by Maria Grazia and Pier Paolo, who uh, were then designing together at Valentino. And then the second room, which we're in now, and the um, set designers have created this incredible late 18th century French room. We've done the idea of the kind of waning days of the French monarchy in the late 18th century. I'm almost sorry that the show couldn't have stayed up so that people could have come to see that show because it was so beautiful, it really should be a show at the Met. One of the best parts of the movie is that we all exit the Met Gala in gowns. All of us ladies got to wear some pretty amazing dresses for the Met Ball that were made for our characters. For each one of them, we wanted there, there to be something that, about their character and their personality that the dress tied into. And so we each have a designer who is making a custom gown for this very movie. Naeem Khan made Mindy Kaling's gown. It is a spectacularly embroidered gold dress with a cape. The color, the gold, I think was a little bit of a nod to her being the jeweler. Alberta Ferretti did my dress, and when it showed up, and it was this cape and the embroidery and the craftsmanship that was put into it, I go, I'm not gonna be able to take that home at the end of the movie. Usually I try to steal everything and it's hanging in my closet. It's like, I'm not gonna get away with stealing that one. That's gonna go into some sort of Warner Brothers archival you know, museum because it's, it's a work of art. And halfway through, late at night at the Met, I looked down at the bottom of the dress and I looked back at the train and I went, oh my God, did anyone else realize the nautical theme? There were starfish and there were shells and there were, it, it was like embroidered waves, all embroidered in gold and silver on top of the sea of black. And I went, oh, the ocean. Valentino made Daphne's dress. She is basically the queen of the ball. I have a long history with the House of Valentino, so I knew whatever they would deliver would be incredible. And just for me personally, I love um, in the old movies when you would see like Grace Kelly's wardrobe designed by and it was some famous designer, Audrey Hepburn's wardrobe designed by Hubert de Givenchy. And so to know that I was getting a moment like that for myself, it actually felt really lovely. We wanted her to have this incredible royal presence, and Valentino did this train for her that's about a 15-foot train, and when she goes up the grand staircase at the Met, that is such a spectacular image of the train going behind her. Every time I put that cape on, oh my gosh, I could just imagine all of the seamstresses back in Italy sewing it, and I felt very grateful. Dolce & Gabbana made Helena Bonham Carter's dress, and it was just so much fun. You have to have at least five fittings for a couture frock, but my body was in New York, obviously, filming, and they were... So I went to Milan for a day on Christmas break, and that was amazing, and I went to their studio, and I saw this frock in the corner, which was this sort of 50s white, sleeveless, beautiful frock, but with roses all over, and I said, well, that's Rose. Dolce & Gabbana did this headpiece for her that had all of these little birds on the top of her head. It was sort of playing with the idea of her aesthetic as Rose Wheel, the fashion designer. didn't wear a gown. 
Kate wore a jumpsuit. Givenchy did the dress. It's an archival piece, which we thought really worked well for Lou's character, that she would wear something maybe that came out of the archives. You had to find something in a way that, that the characters had access to and that had an echo of, I suppose, the character's style. I'm working with Prada and my dress is so beautiful. Prada did the most beautiful dress, but the dress also had to work for the story because she is still somewhat undercover in her Met Gala gown because she's working for Vogue. It's very Tammy. Everything about it is exactly what I would have hoped for. Jonathan Simkai made Aquafina's dress. She was the youngest of the group. I went into his showroom to try on the gown, it's so gorgeous, oh my god. It's like the prettiest thing I'll ever wear in my lifetime. But it's funny because there were actual models there like also trying things on, so they were coming out. And then comes like this quasi-moto, like Frankenstein, because I can't walk in heels, like completely tipped over, you know? For her, the transformation was really big. Going from this skateboarding kid to this very beautiful, sophisticated woman in that Jonathan Simkai gown. Working with Rihanna was really fun. Gary wanted it to be like, oh my God, you know, this incredible extreme transformation from a shapeless character in the halal cart into this just wasp-waisted goddess. We worked with Zach Posen to achieve that look. He did a fantastic job. He made the dress for her. You know, complete Cinderella transformation. No one can do it better than Rihanna. I'm super happy with how our gala turned out. It was really uh, ambitious. Fortunately, we got to shoot in the Met. If we hadn't shot in the Met, I think it would have been literally impossible. But then you have design challenges where you have to live up to not only what the Met Ball actually is, but what people's imagination of it is. And so I think it lives up to, you know, any Met Ball, and I, I'm super proud of it.